نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So today, inshallah, we will go through a quick summary of Surah Mulk. We finished it yesterday. So just to remind ourselves what we have learned so far. So Surah Mulk talks about the power of Allah. We see in the beginning of Ayah, in the beginning of Surah, Yadi al-Mulk, wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. So everything is in his power, in his hand, and he is in control of everything. Then we learned about the purpose of creating life and death. And Allah SWT says, لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا So why Allah SWT created us, why He created life and death, so that He can determine who among us does the right deeds according to His commands, and who among us falls into this trap of sinning, and then, you know, gets punishment. And um, then there are many signs of Allah SWT's existence that are mentioned in the surah. We learn about the faultless creation of heavens and earth and the entire celestial system, the galaxies and so on and so forth. We learn about the surface, the submissive surface of earth that Allah SWT has created. So it is not too hard, not too soft for our use. We learn about the flight of birds. And again, you see them flying in the air without any support. Um, and it is indeed such a unique mechanism that works within their bodies to attain this flight, and who can do that without an engineer who understands how everything works, and that is Allah SWT. And then we touched upon this whole uh, water cycle process, you know, Allah SWT just could take away water, make it sunk further into the earth, bring drought in an, in a, in an area, then what can happen? No one can stop him from doing so, so he has the power. Then we also learn about Kuffar in Jahannam when they were asked, well, did not someone come to you and uh, warn you about this? And they said, no, we didn't pay attention to what someone was saying. And again, we should remember this ayah, if indeed, you know, we just heard and listened, you know, we would be in a different state. So they would be regretting that situation. And then in the hopes at that point, that maybe there is still a chance, they will say, They will acknowledge their sins, but those confessions are too late. They won't really be helpful at that point. Um, and then further on, Allah SWT reminds us, That you will be returned, you will be gathered uh, towards Him. Um, and towards the end of it, of course, we should always maintain our trust in Allah SWT. قُلْ هُوَ الرَّحْمَنُ آمَنَّا بِهِ وَعَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْنَا So Allah SWT is saying, look, we believe, we should say we believe, and then on Him do we actually put in trust Allah SWT. Before we go on to the next surah, I just wanted to take a few moments and reflect on some thoughts. Alhamdulillah, Allah SWT, Give us the opportunity to finish our first surah to together. Uh, and may Allah SWT give us the tawfiq to complete the rest of his book, the blessed book, and put barakah in our time and effort, and allow us to learn and act upon the teachings of Quran and Sunnah. I mean, our intention remains to learn what Allah SWT says to us in Quran, to fulfill our obligation to Allah SWT as he has prescribed to us, and to gain his pleasure. As you finish one surah and move on to the next, we need to reflect on what we are learning and, and how that is changing ourselves. We need to change something in our daily routine. Otherwise, all of these talks have very little benefit if they are listened to but not really acted upon. Allah SWT reminds us again and again in the Quran, وَبَشِّرِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَامِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ أَنَّ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ Give glad tidings to people who believe and do good deeds. Those people who believed and did good deeds, they are the people of Jannah, and they will remain in there forever. So Allah SWT keeps pairing the idea of belief with action. Our religion, Islam, is about 
both belief and action. Action without belief is what disbelievers do, and they will be rewarded in this world. They have no part in the eternal blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter. We compare that to um, the other option, which is to have belief without any action. So in this case, someone who has, can have very strong belief but performs no action, this situation cannot save us from being punished in the hellfire. You'll still be punished. Of course, we believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will in the end take us out. But even a millisecond of experience in Jahannam is worth to be afraid of, is worth to be avoided. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us Jannah without hisab, without going through any more difficulty in the hereafter. I mean, we should also remember, as it comes in narration, narrated by Abu Hurairah in Bukhari, Nabi Sallallahu said to his family, and in particular, there's part of it where he addresses Fatima Ta'ala, Ya Fatima, anqidhi nafsak min al-nar, fa inni la amliku lakum min Allahi shay'a, غَيْرَ أَنَّ لَكُمْ رَحِمًا سَأَبَلُّهَا لِبَلَالِهَا So, O Fatima, save yourself from hellfire. For I have no power to protect you from Allah in anything, except that I will uphold, uphold the ties of kinship with you. So, I mean, Prophet ﷺ is not guaranteeing anyone's to save anyone and advising to take action even to his daughter, Fatima Anha, who, who is saved in the side, Ahli Jannah. Another narration comes in which Rabia bin Ka'ab Aslami, and this is in Sunan Nabi Dawood. He used to live uh, with Prophet Sallallahu So he says, I used to live with Messenger of Allah Sallallahu at night. I would bring water for his ablution and his needs. So he asked me one night, I mean, he asked, uh, okay, ask me anything. So I said, so the Sahabi, he asked for your company in paradise. Ya Rasulullah, I want to be with you in paradise. So Prophet Sallallahu said, Mitchell, is, is there anything else you're wanting to have? He said, no, this is the only thing. So what did Prophet Sallallahu said? Then help me by making many prostrations. So again, it's not just by dua, you have to take action. It's not just by strong belief, you have to take action. So as a takeaway, I'm asking all of you, including myself, let's make a habit of reading Surah Mulk every day. Fix a time and read it. It could be at night before going to bed, could be first thing in the morning after you prayed Fajr. I'm suggesting these two times because generally we, our days are busy with many, many other routines. And hopefully in the beginning and end of it, we can find a regular cadence to it. Um, this hadith, we have read it in the beginning of the uh, surah uh, when we're describing the introduction of it, the benefit of Surah Al-Mulk to the protector. It will save you from the torment of grief. ربنا اغفر لنا ذنوبنا واسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت قدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين آمين